Hunter's Corner. Um, we are on YouTube. At, just go to YouTube and our channel is Pepper's Corner. Uh, we're on the Instagram thing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Facebook page is Pepper's Corner. Uh, pretty much you Google Pepper's Corner will pop, will pop up. Cool. All right. So today we're talking about dogs in yards. And uh, dogs spend a lot of time in their yards. So are they safe? Mm, great question. Think? Turns out they're not so safe. We're going to go through a few things that I, I learned about. Um, some of it's common sense and some of it uh, surprised me, like how many plants are actually, if the dog eats them, are poisonous. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a big long list. We'll talk about that, but um, uh, anything, to go, what's going on with Daisy before we get, in, get into the yard stuff? Um, well, recently, like this week. I think she's upset with me for being uh -oh. gone long periods of time uh, because there's absolutely no excuse why she would poop in the house, uh -huh. but she has been. So she's acting out a little bit. Yeah, but she acts really sorry about it. After the fact. But there's like, she's home, like I'm home, she'll be outside, she can ask that to go out. Chance, like yeah. it, it is almost on purpose. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Is she chewing up anything? No. Okay. It's just been the poop. Okay. Well, let, let's hope that changes. Yeah, nobody likes their house. Because you long. recently changed your one day a week, you're staying gone longer. And uh -huh. Where you used to be because of the baby, you were home all the time with the yep. baby. Oh, that makes sense. And we haven't been able to go to grandma's as, as much. As much? Okay, mm -hmm. yep. That makes sense. I yeah. mean, that's all I can think of. Well, <laughs> How about hopefully that changes. She'll adapt to imagine. She, She's smart. She will. Yeah. Uh, with us, we got some little escape artists. <laughs> so, and we're going to talk about the yard stuff. But um, I was just, I don't, I was sitting at the kitchen table, and we have a big window that looks out over the yard, and the puppies are in the backyard. And I just happened to see one of their tail, just their tail, on our side of the fence. Huh. And so I run out there. Sure enough, it was right behind a bush, so I didn't notice the hole there. They had tunneled all the way under the fence. And Scout um, was just hit, her hips and her tail couldn't quite fit through. She was almost escaped. So that's what prompted me to we, we're, why we're talking about this. And kind of this last week, we've been making it all dig proof along there. And we'll talk about that. But that's what they almost got out. And what was on the other side of that fence? I'm sure there was some smell or something. I don't know. It backs up against a pretty busy road there. So really want to make sure they can't dig out, especially on that side. Yeah. So if they dig out anywhere else, they're digging into the neighbor's yard. So. <laughs> It'd just be a little <laughs> awkward, but yeah. it wouldn't be that bad. <laughs> yeah, but against the back fence, we want to make sure they can't. Yeah. All right, so we'll dig in. So are our yards safe? Dig in. <laughs> <laughs> that was not on purpose. Good call. Good call. So um, there's something that can become unsafe in your yard that you have to just be consistent about checking, and one of those is your fence maintenance. Mm -hmm. So. Some of the major things that happen, like if you have, like the different types of fences would be privacy, wood privacy fence. That's what we have. And then you have, you have chain link, right? We have half chain link, half privacy fence. Okay. Yeah. So with the chain link, what happens is like if you're mowing and a rock hits that, it can burr it up. And if the dog rubs up against it, they can, you know, get a cut. I could see that. Yeah. So that's, some, so you just want to check your fence. Make sure there's not I sharp. would say for me, I have four dogs, so just checking for holes and stuff. I can, you know, I didn't even think about that till I read the, these articles and just walk your fence once a week just to make sure there's no holes or in it. Like for slat fences, they get splintered. You're supposed to replace those immediately if they're splintered because the dogs like to chew on things and those would those that would slats get... they make are. They get all splintered in the mouth because uh, you know it's not real finished wood. It's kind of rough and splintery. Yeah. yeah, that that would not be fun. No, that would hurt, poor baby. So <clears throat> there's that. So you want to make sure all the the fence is maintained properly and keep it updated. Um, any holes in the fence? Hello, we fly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big problem. Um, and then there's the landscaping. So shrubs, dead branches. My dogs are notorious for tearing up the shrubs and getting any of the dead branches off and chewing them up. Well, this happened probably about three years ago. Molly, our lab, took a dead branch off of her bush and chewed on it. And then it was probably a month later, I 
you have to, you know, you're petting your dog and I smelled it like it smelled like infection. I'm like, where's that coming from? Is that me? Is that my breath? Yeah. And then I finally figured out Molly had a twig lodged in the roof of her mouth and it was digging into the oh. sides of her, So it was getting infected. And so I reached in there and tried to pull it out and she, it was obviously very tender. So I finally just sweep, swept it out of there and a bunch of gunk came out of it. So it was lodged up in there. Ow. And it had to hurt. She wasn't feeling very well, obviously. No, so, and if that was in there for a long time, I mean, infection throughout yeah, your body. Yeah. Eh, it's not good. Right. So just got to be, if you have uh, like bushes in the back, just make sure all the dead branches are off so that they can't chew on it and, get, and either swallow some or get it lodged in their mouth. So, man, this dog thing takes a lot of work, doesn't it? <laughs> They're like kids. Who <laughs> <laughs> so, would realize? Um, and then I am notorious for this. So doing yard work, you know, you have your little spade and your little rake. Apparently, you know, there's, that can be very dangerous for your dogs. And I, you know, I just don't do it on purpose, but I don't think about it. So just being diligent about taking them out of the backyard after you're done using them. Just like kids. I'm the world worst, leaving them propped up on the side of the house yeah. or something. Oh, so they can get hurt with those. And then uh, the most, probably the most that I never, even even on my radar was different plants that if they ingest it are very toxic. And the list is quite extensive. So I'm not going to go through everything, but I'm going to list off some of the like more popular plants that could be poisonous for dogs and we got a link for the, the whole entire list so if you have any of these in your yard you might want to think about putting them in the front or something so i don't even I've never heard of the castor bean i've never heard of that uh, these are the ones that are absolutely get rid of them or they can be very toxic um uh dumb cane hemlock english ivy the leaves and the berries mistletoe Oleander, do you know what that is? No. Cilantro. What? Oleander is the Dogs seed. can't have cilantro? I guess not. Uh, thorn apple or jimson weed. Is this if they eat it? Eat the, I'm or... guessing eat the leaves, I'm guessing. Or the berry, if they had berries like okay, that. Okay, so they English ivy is going to have berries. Um, you, and I don't know if this is if they brush up against it and or eat it. I'm assuming eat it, wouldn't you? Oh, let me see. <laughs> and then any mushroom you can't identify as safe. So sometimes, you know, they'll pop up. I always just, I don't care if, the, if they're edible or not. I always just, as soon as they pop up in the yard. It's wrong. Yeah, I, I get them out of there. So, And then there's a long list of things that are not quite as as bad, but still pretty bad. And I don't even, oh, marijuana is on the list. Well, of course that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tulips, tulip bulbs. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Virginia creeper, rhubarb, peace lily. Huh. That's a popular flower, right? Yeah. Um, flower bulbs of any kind are not good. Mums. I could see your dogs digging up a flower bulb and eating it. And then there's the, another, like a popular ones are rhododendron, um, azaleas. So just uh, go through this list and see if you have any of this in your backyard. Um, and think about I mean if it was up to me anything that's even remotely toxic I'm going to get rid of yeah. so I'm going to have to go through and look I just thought of something what? what if I don't know what that plant in my backyard is what if you move into a new house and you don't know you planted? google it okay <laughs> can you do that what if you you just um, kind of describe it in google I would think okay how huh I don't know <laughs> so like <laughs> I have a bush that is <laughs> got leaves on it <laughs> i don't know it's got pointy know. leaves at the end you would know. look at pictures of bushes until you found oh, your man. bush okay or just dig it dig up it out. and replace it with something that you know what it is I okay think. yeah i guess that would okay. be safe yeah but someone anyway, would always want that plant so just be be conscious of what you have planted um so we actually have a few bulbs in the back so we won't have to dig those up but they're gone they're gone. Okay. So <laughs> those are the things of the major dangers in your yard. Um, of course, any holes that they dig, you want to fill them in because 
they go running across there, they can break a leg too. Yeah. And I like stepped a... in a hole the little boogers dug and Aww. twisted my ankle. So it's not just the dog's safety, the human safety too. But of course, the dog safety is more important, right? Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. So next, we're talking about how to keep your dogs from escaping the yard. Mm. Oh my gosh. I've been driving me crazy for about three weeks. Um, so anyway, if you have, haven't been following us, I have two beagles. They're one year old as of last week, and they have discovered that they are really, really good diggers. They are. They could go oh to God. China. Yes. <laughs> so, and they, once they get a smell of something on the other side, they are tenacious. They just won't stop. And you like drag them out of the hole and fill it in and they go right back as soon as they go back out. Now for our lifestyle... They very rarely are by themselves more than three hours. Okay. So some good news, the good thing is that they're, there's two of them, so they entertain each other for part of it, so they're not like digging constantly. Um, but keeping them from being bored, so if they have something to play with in the backyard, is better than just plopping them outside. You don't, you don't, you crank Daisy when you're gone, or just she just she has a run of the house. She just chills on the couch. Okay. She'll play with her toys. I'll come home, and all of her toys are all over the house. It's really <laughs> cute. <laughs> yeah. So you know, the, leaving them in a the yard is probably not the best. I know sometimes that just if you work at a regular nine to five job and you don't want to leave them inside, or it, don't feel like you can leave them inside, like there is no way those puppies would stay inside by themselves. They could, but, and you'd have a major yeah. disaster when you came back. If Daisy had to be outside, I'm going to be honest, I would probably get one of those really, really long leashes and mm -hmm. attach it like to Eli's playset set or yeah. something. Because if she wanted to leave the yard, she could. Yeah. She could jump over. <laughs> and then like with beagles, they are very, they follow their nose. So if they get a scent of something and they want to get out, they're going to get out. So yeah. you don't want to leave them all day long, in yeah. my opinion. So. And I actually read a, or read, listened to a podcast from a dog trainer that his opinion is nobody should have a yard. Why? He says that people use it as a crutch to contain their dog and they don't spend any time with them. That's sad. You know, so, and he's saying like, get out and walk them, play with them, but you gotta work. You can't play with them all the time unless you're a dog trainer, I guess. He is, though. <laughs> but I get his point, though, that, you know, yeah. you don't want to just use the fence. as. But, but at the same us, time, I mean, even with, like, even us or even children, like, yeah. having alone time is good. You have right, to learn sure. to entertain yourself sometimes. Right, yes. And for short periods of time, yes. Yeah. And you don't want them running, wandering off. Yeah. So, so there's several different methods of ways to keep them from digging under fences or escaping of course making sure there's no way they can climb on top of something and then jump over the fence yeah. so nothing up against the fences that's a given there yeah. some dogs are athletic enough to just jump right over yeah. uh, i'm talking more these four things are more about digging under so the first one is the one i would rule out immediately is the electric fence because I have seen them not, I mean, if the dog wants to get through it badly enough, yep. they're going to just Enjoy take the this shot. app and just keep going. Um, like them beagles would, if they smelled something or saw a rabbit, they they would take all kinds of zaps from that electric fence and just keep going. Yeah. Um, I don't think they work real effectively. I now, some so. dogs, they may work fine for, but. Not I a think it's a hound type no, dog, not no, no, no. someone who is going after something. Yeah, yeah. They... Like my mom had some, and it worked for her boxers, who were super okay. chill and just kind of laid right. around and would play every now and then. Um, but let's say some dogs came into the yard. If they chased them off, they would break their little mm -hmm. boundary system to go right. get them. Yeah. Right. But reading these articles, I did not realize that a boundary system was used in town. I think it's yeah, crazy. I do too. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> you were walking along and the dog will... dogs just in the front yard, I guess. I guess. And that blog post we were talking, I think it was the one that you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. This professional dog walker is walking along and people have the dog just loose with a 
visible fence in their front yard and then that they chased through there. Yeah, it, no, no, it no. was an aggressive dog or felt attacked or something. And yeah. so just went and bit their dog. Like, yeah. that's crazy. I think so. It's like not a fence at all. Nope. Nope. So we're ruling that one out. Yeah. For us anyway. And then the next one is the little, you've seen them there. Um, they're like about, I think they're like two foot long and they got little spikes that go down. So you just push them down in the ground oh, and yeah. so they keep them from digging. But I checked on those. Like for enough for me to cover my yard would have been like eight hundred dollars. What? Yeah. Yes. I mean your yard is good but the, size, but the, not the, the bad. from Lowe's there was a package of two that was, so that'd be four feet. A package of two was forty dollars, so that's four feet. That's oh, ten dollars a foot. So I measured, you know, linear feet around your yard, added it up and I'm like, No way. No. That's crazy. So it would be easy. You just push them down on the ground, and that keeps them from digging. So if that works for you, great. And then the wire, it's an L-shaped wire. It's like a foot by foot, so it makes an L. And you can just you can either bury it or just set it along the bottom of your fence, and so and then secure it like with either like little staples, stakes, stakes, or you could bury it. And then that would work great. I didn't check the price of it. Did you happen to see how I much it was? I'm assuming that would be cheaper than the strips and would work pretty good, I would think. And pretty be easy, pretty easy to install if you didn't dig it. If you just laid it across the top, that'd be easy. Uh, the one I, I knew is foolproof for me that worked for me was you dig a four inch, you use post hole diggers and dig a four inches deep along the bottom of the fence all the way around and then pour concrete in that trench. So under, so it's under the concrete. Don't put the concrete all the way up to grass level. Leave it a couple inches and put dirt back on it, and then you can put the grass back on. And they would have to dig a long. They would have to dig four inches down, and then the trench is like that wide, so like six inches wide. So they have to dig down four, eight, ten inches, and then they'd have to dig across six inches. Before they could get out. Before they could even get you'd close ha- to You'd them. be able to catch them. Oh, yeah. So you know? that's the point. So you, it doesn't take them very long to dig under a fence, especially because the fences are not touching the ground. So they're an inch or so oh, above yeah, the ground. Because they don't want them to rot out on the wood fence. So you dig a trench. It's a lot of work. Yeah. But it's a lot cheaper. I think I spent, for my fence that I needed to do, because I'd already trenched one side because our neighbor dog was digging in. Mm-hmm. This was before <laughs> we got the beagles. I'd have had to have done it anyway when the Beagles came because they would definitely dug under that fence and <laughs> visited the neighbors. Gone to play. Yeah, so I did that one last, a couple years ago. But the one I did now is the back fence. I'm going to estimate that was probably about um, 60 feet or so, rough estimate. And I spent... Sixty dollars on concrete. What? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So pretty much just your time. Yeah, and you, the it's labor the itself. manual <laughs> labor. That's the, if you if you have the if you have the ability to do it, it's the I think it's the cheapest and best way to go because once that concrete sets up, they would have to dig a long while to get underneath that. So, and they've already tried actually. Have they? <laughs> yes. They were unsuccessful. They were unsuccessful. Awesome. High five. We high fived here. <laughs> so. That would be the method I would use personally because uh, it, it worked for us anyway. And we have some crazy diggers. Um, so that's all I had. Anything else? Um, not that I can think of. Okay. Your little diggers are super cute though. Oh, they are. They're, they are so much fun. And they, <laughs> I did not tell my wife this, but the <laughs> other day they'd been out. I was digging the trench, so they're... Checking out what I'm doing, you yeah. know. Yeah. And they were digging around a little bit. And so they had dirt all over their paws. And then I, I let them in. They come in. Their their beds or their crates are in our cl- our bedroom closet. Uh-huh. And so they we have patio doors that go into the kitchen or into our bedroom. So I, to keep them from going crazy all over the house, I bring them in through our bedroom. Well, they had, been, uh, had dirt all over their paws, and they jumped up on the bed when they came in. And so the 
What do you call the thing that is over the top of the bed? Like, like a comforter? Comforter, thank you. Okay. That was pulled back so the <gasps> sheets no. were exposed. That's the So worst. they got dirt all over the sheets. And so I just pulled the comforter over no, it. No, you didn't. And put the puppies in the crate. So. That is the worst. I'll, I'll fix it. Okay, yeah. The worst is whenever that you're, yesterday, you're crawling so. into bed and you're like, why am I covered in sand? Daisy does that all okay. the time. So we have to make sure that thing is back. I mean, that reminded me. I, does she does she like to play in the sandbox? Is it a sandbox or is it just sand in the yard? Um, it's the, I live in Sand Spring, so it's a sand in the yard. Yeah, she doesn't mess around in the sandbox. Okay. So but I, it's from she runs. One of the things they recommend in the articles I've read is if you have them really bad diggers, is give them a dedicated area to dig. To dig, and you can train them to dig there. I don't think that'll work with the beagles because their they're main smitten. reason is to get somewhere to. They smell something. They want to get to wherever that is. So Daisy used to like to dig, but she got in trouble for digging, so okay, she stopped. Yeah, yeah you but can she's she's not a smeller. Go get right. it like yours yeah, are. Exactly. They're, she's a herder. And, yeah, she's like I'll just run around. <laughs> so that's an option um, if you think you could train them to stay in one spot and make a dedicated spot for them to dig. If they're, because you, you know, if you think about it, most some of the dogs it's instinctual for them to dig. I mean, you're trying to trying to train instinct out of them, and that's never gonna and, happen. I mean, it could. I mean, if you have a smart dog and you work at it long enough, you probably could. But let them dig. That's kind of that's my opinion. Like, yeah. So we have. So now they, they're digging in, sometimes they're digging underneath the bushes to get to the cool dirt too. Yeah. They like to lay in the... They still dig in yeah. that type. They so like I'm okay cool. with that. I'll fill in the holes. Yeah. But... <laughs>